Of course, it was a shock to me when Mr. Rickey told me in confidence that he was going to bring a black player. He told me this before he ever knew Robinson was coming. He told me this in March of 1945. Uh, uh, and he didn't uh, come in touch with Robinson himself until late that year. But I knew Mr. Rickey when he said he was going to do something, he was going to do it. And I had to examine myself. Of course, Mr. Rickey gave me time to either make up my mind to broadcast properly through a very stormy period or quit. And my first reaction was when I came home, told Lala that I said, I'm going to quit. I don't think I can go through with this. And she said, well, very wise woman. She said, you don't have to quit right now. Let's have a martini. And I began to think about it as the days went by. And I had to understand that it was by chance that I was born white. I could have been born black. I could have been born uh, to any, any parents, any place, any time. Judge Landis was not dead. And as I wrestled with myself, I heard the voice from the grave saying, report. And that's all I was to it. That's all, the, all I did about Robinson. I merely reported him. And he did the rest. And Jackie Robinson, long a spark plug for them bums, gets them off and running to prove how rough it can be. Mr. Rickey said to Robinson, I know you're competitive, violently competitive. I know you have stood on your rights as a black man, including fighting the United States Army until they gave you an honorable discharge. But the only way that you can be the first black man to successfully integrate baseball is that you must accept the injuries, you must accept the bean balls, you must accept the profane foul curses. And that the story of Jackie Robinson is not in his base hits or his percentage or his stolen bases. To me, the story is Robinson, the spiritual man who didn't answer back for three years. And that is what made it possible for the others.